Welcome, Russell. We are just kind of hanging out for a couple minutes, um, seeing if anybody else pops on. Um, a couple questions that came up that I'm definitely going to talk about, but of course, uh, let me know if you have more things you want me to talk about. Um, so a couple people have asked from looking over the rubric uh, for more clarification on what experimentation and risk taking means. Um, so I'm, I'm going to most definitely address that today. Another question was how do you show voice or personal style within one piece, which is another fabulous question that I'm going to attempt to answer. Let's see, Zoe says, not that I can think of, maybe an explanation of the rubric, but it seemed like you were going, yeah. Yeah, so I think um, tonight I had kind of planned on our main focus being going over the rubric, talking about it a little bit more, um, how it works, making sure that you're comfortable with it because I know it's, it's kind of wordy in and of itself and um, can be a little bit confusing. All right, you guys having a good week? Um, Russell says, yes, Zoe says, guess so, Zoe, that's not very convincing. Um, yeah, I'm having a pretty good week. We are, uh, we haven't had a kitchen for four months, um, and, uh, the whole kitchen's from Ikea, so I finally built all of the cabinets this week and, and was unpacking the kitchen before I popped on this call. So while that may not seem that exciting, um... I'm really happy to be getting out of boxes and uh, I can't stand when things don't look really nice. Uh, so I'm excited to actually start making things look pretty. And it's fall weather, which is my favorite weather ever. Um, how are you guys feeling about starting your first concentration piece? Good. Stressed, confused. Russell's excited, good. All right. Uh oh, Zoe says not good. So maybe let's start there, Zoe, since it's just the three of us at the moment. Um, and let's see if we can get you feeling good. Um, so, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you're not feeling good? And while you're typing away, I'm going to grab copies of the rubrics. Okay. Hi, Erin. We are just kind of uh, getting started chatting a little bit. The main focus of today is going over the rubrics and making sure everybody understands how they work, what the work wording says, and all of those things. Okay, so, and we're also chatting because Zoe's not feeling awesome about her concentration piece at the moment to see if we can fix that. Um, I decided to draw the Golden Gate Bridge from a three-point perspective and I keep on finding more details to add. Um, one thing that you can do if you're feeling kind of frustrated or unsure about it. Take a couple of photos and share it in the group because a lot of times you're like way, we're always more critical of, of our own work than everyone else's. Um, and kind of keep asking yourself, um, are you enjoying drawing the details? I'm kind of getting the feeling that maybe you aren't enjoying drawing the details. Um, so, you can think about one, are all of the details totally essential to the story and the overall feeling of the drawing? Uh, you can also think about the idea that you don't have to draw everything for the mind to kind of complete it. So you can draw some details of the bridge and then be really minimal in other spaces and our eyes and our minds kind of naturally complete that information. So a lot of times you can get away with not putting 
all of the detail in everywhere, which I'm going to make myself a little note um, to tonight or tomorrow, maybe look for some examples for you. Okay. Uh, welcome, Celine. All right, so we are going to jump in, um, talk about, I'm going to address the questions that have come up first with the rubric, and at any point, if whatever I'm saying spurs on more questions for you, or there's other things you want me to discuss with the rubric, um, feel free to interrupt me, or kind of, you can talk or just chat in the little comment box, and I'll try and pay attention to that as well. Uh, so one of the questions that I think has come up the most is really what does it mean by experimentation and risk taking, um, which I agree can be sort of ambiguous and confusing. Um, so one thing that will be helpful is part of what I do when I'm kind of giving you some prompts and some guidance for your concentration pieces and for your breadth pieces is I'm naturally trying to set it up and push you in slightly different directions. Um, but the easiest way to break it down is they want to see that you are willing to try new things. That it's not like saying, I'm fabulous at drawing front portraits, like a person front on. And so you just draw 12 different people, um, but you use the same medium, you use the same size composition, you organize your composition in the same way, and they might be absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous drawings. But within that, it doesn't look like you were trying anything new. Um, or really pushing or growing yourself. So part of what they want to see, um, and this is, so the rubric I shared with you, and I I do try and use it a lot when I'm grading your pieces, just so you're kind of getting similar feedback. They're using that rubric when the college readers score your portfolio. They're not scoring each individual piece. They're scoring the quality pieces as a whole. So the five quality pieces get a score the 12 concentration pieces get a score, the 12 breadth pieces get a score. So there are some places where this rubric seems kind of confusing for individual pieces, but I keep that in mind when I'm using it. So um, they want to see from piece to piece that you're trying new things. Um, I would say, yes, I most definitely want you to think about it. Um, that is something that as your teacher, I also really, really focus on helping you with as I'm giving you feedback and critique on your pieces. And I'm naturally putting it into the assignments because I think for the most part, it's something that students don't tend to be super used to doing or comfortable with. So that's part of uh, the point of me. Um, and I will most definitely be telling you if I'm like, you're doing the, the same thing over again. There's not enough experimentation. There's not enough risk taking. Does that clear that up or does anybody want me to talk about that some more? Um, and kind of building on, okay, makes sense. Sort of building on that, um, I think it's next week, I made a mini lesson for you um, explaining to you what the creative process is. Some of you may be more familiar with it than others. Uh, so talking about the actual psychology behind the creative process and how you actually problem solve and working through it. And I'm working on a lesson specifically based on how to bring more exper experimentation and risk taking into your work. So especially for your first piece, it's not something that um, you majorly have to focus on, it's going to kind of, it's going to keep on happening as, as you move forward. Um, the other question is how do you show voice or personal style with just one piece? Oh, whoops, hold on. Is this for the concentration portfolio or breadth or sorry, I think I missed the beginning. No problem. Um, 
it's, it actually ends up being for, for both. Uh, what I'm officially talking about today is the concentration since that's what we're working on. But when we get to the breadth section, you'll see the rubric is very, very similar. Um, and something that the College Board, I will say from past experience, they really, really value experimentation and risk taking. Um, so some of my students that I taught in person, um, which they didn't, they had a much shorter time to create the portfolio, had f phenomenal, really, really beautiful work, but there wasn't a lot of risk taking and experimentation. Um, and they didn't do well as people that actually, their overall work was of less quality, but there was more experimentation and risk taking. Um, so you will hear me jabbering and pushing you to try new things quite a lot because I know that that's something Welcome, Daryl, um, because I know that that's something that the College Board really uh, does focus on. Um, so, as I was saying, another question was, how do you show a voice or personal style with just one piece? Um, which is fabulous. Um, so, the thing is is you, in a way, can show it in one piece and in a way have to have a body. So part of what it's looking for, um, and you'll kind of see, especially as I am grading your, your work, um, for the early pieces, I'm not going to be putting as much focus on experimentation, risk taking, or on personal style and voice, or on transformation, um, because some of that it, there ha does have to be more than one piece for that to really happen. So um, the personal style is kind of twofold. So yes, you do have to have kind of a body of work to really overall define your personal style um, and voice, but at the same time, you wanna get it strong enough that you could have a piece all by itself and people could pick out and say, I know that Celine made this piece. I know that Zoe made this piece. Um, so that's another thing we're gonna be we're gonna be focusing on a lot. Um, one, a lot of you are gonna find that you naturally have a voice and personal style because you are a unique individual, and that naturally shows up in your work. Um, so what I always really encourage people to do, um, and as, as I see more and more of your work, I can help push you in that direction, is really um, look at the work you're creating now, look at the work that you created in the past. Um, you might also look at the way that you dress. You might look at the way that you decorate your room and start to see if there are common things that you see over and over again. So if you're thinking like, I have no clue what my personal voice is or what my personal style is, um, that's one way to figure it out. Um, another exercise that a lot of students have found helpful is either to hop onto Pinterest or grab magazines and start cutting things out of it. Um, and you don't have to, they don't have to be art things, just things that you are interested in. And then go back and look at them as a group and look, are there common colors that you, that you seem to be attracted to? Um, do you like things that are really clean and straight edged and modern? Or do you like kind of eclectic or do you like gothic um, and you're going to start to kind of see that same type of thing show up in your work so like I said um, on one hand it's hard to have a personal voice in one piece you most definitely do develop it over a series but at the same time each individual piece should be able to stand on its own um, if your voice is strong enough and people know that it's yours does that make sense to everybody? Do you want um, more follow up or are we good? Um, how many of you, you can either, if your camera's on, you can nod your head or you can type in the chat and say yes. If you sort of feel like 
you have an idea of what your personal style might look like. I've got some nodding. So, all right, so Daryl nodded. Yes, Aaron nodded, yes. Russell says in a very loose sense, lean a little bit. Zoe, yes, Aaron, same a little bit. Um, and that's totally, totally normal. Um, and you might find that your style changes some um, as you go through the course um, and as you go through life. Uh, the house that I previously lived in for eight years was like wildly, wildly colorful. Um, I painted it with all kinds of crazy bright colors. There were murals on the walls. Um, the house I just moved into instead is we're designing it like super modern and industrial. So like everything's like white, clean lines, stainless steel. No, I did not turn into a different person in eight years. Um, but my style and my design aesthetic has um, kind of changed and that's allowed, so you're gonna find that too. Um, and really, as I'm looking at your work and as you guys look at each other's work, which is almost easier to have other people tell you what your style is, uh, you will see it start to emerge. Many of you, even as you're just posting thumbnails, you already have kind of your own voice that's showing up. Your concentration statement in and of itself, so what you're interested in and what's inspiring you, that is some of your own voice as well, um, but we'll we'll see it start to emerge. Um, if I don't see it emerging, I will annoy you until it does emerge, or hopefully not annoy you, just push you forward. Um, or if you're seeming like you're, you know, 50 different people, uh, I'll also kind of rein you in to edit it down and hopefully help you just to find you. Um, no that having a personal style doesn't mean that everything really needs to, it doesn't need to look the same. Um, the other thing I would encourage you to do if this is still feeling a little bit con confusing is hop back and, and if you don't remember where the le link is, let me know and I can post it again, um, onto the College Board site and look at some more examples of the high scoring portfolios and kind of just jot down like three or four words that first come to your mind when you look at those portfolios and you're going to start to see how, um, how things are running through people's, people's work. Um, were there any other parts that are like hurting your head, confusing you about the rubric? I'm just glancing down at it to see. Um, while well, you guys think. Um, oh, there was another good question. I don't remember who posed it um, in the group that was asking um, about like work and originality and kind of if you're using photographs or other resources as references. Um, so if it's okay if a piece isn't 100% original um, so one, it's most definitely okay. Um, it's really, really challenging to create something that is 100% original. Um, almost everything artists are doing are bits and pieces of inspiration from things that they've seen around them, from stories that they're telling and kind of remixing it. Uh, you are definitely allowed to and encouraged to use things as references. Um, the main thing I always tell people to stay away from are things that are actually copyrighted. So, uh, like Disney characters, things like that, there, that there are copyright laws on them. Um, you don't want to copy them, um, because one, it's not legal. Two, 
Um, that's something where that is most definitely not your voice. You are stealing someone else's voice. Um, but when you're using something um, as a reference to figure out what something looks like, when you're maybe looking at something to get ideas for compositions and how to organize things, um, or like Zoe is working on an image of the Golden Gate Bridge, um, it would be absolutely ridiculous if she was not looking at the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, that's not considered, especially things like that that are just in the world around us, um, that's not considered you not having a unique idea. You're bringing your own, you're bringing your own perspective to it. Um, so that's totally fine. Everything does not have to um, originally emerge from your brain. Uh, if you're ever doing anything where you wanna use elements of collage, where you wanna bring photography into it, if you haven't taken the photos, um, that doesn't 100% mean you can't use them. Uh, you just have to change them enough that they really become your own. It's kind of the same idea of writing and plagiarism you need to change research information into enough of your own words so that it's not like you're just copying. It's also one of those things, if you're working on collage or using photographs and you're not sure if you've changed it enough, um, just ask and I will tell you. Um, anything else confusing to you about the rubric? Okay, um, so does everybody feel like one, like you know what you're doing with your concentration piece this week, and two, do you feel like you're clear on the understanding of how you're submitting your concentration piece? Okay, I'm getting yeses, think so, <laughs> probably, yes. Okay, um, obviously if you get to the point and you're like, I actually don't have a clue how to submit this, you can ask and I'll answer. Um, the submission process, the directions that I gave you is different than I've ever done before. Um, I've tested it out with myself and it worked well with myself, but um, I don't think it'll be a complete disaster, but if it if it doesn't go smoothly or if you're really struggling, um, we will most definitely adjust. Um, since this is kind of our your first official concentration piece, um, there's a couple different ways that I normally grade and provide feedback. So for the most part, the goal is that you get it submitted sometime on Friday. Um, what I will normally plan to do is work on grading and giving you feedback on Saturday and Sunday because I really try to give you feedback on a piece before you're starting another piece because if you kind of went on the wrong track on one piece, I wanna make sure to stop you and help redirect you before you go down the wrong track on another piece. Um, so normally I will be working on that. I probably will hold off more until Sunday-ish, so you have Saturday of like a buffer zone because I like to sit down and, and do it all as one at one time. Um, I always will kind of highlight on the rubric where you would fall. Um, and like I said, the first couple pieces, obviously I'm a little bit flexible on some of the categories that don't make a whole lot of sense with just one individual piece. Um, and I give feedback um, in sometimes two ways, sometimes one way. So sometimes I'll just type on the rubric like comments as to why I gave you whatever score I gave you. Um, 
Sometimes I will put the images, like your artwork, up on my computer screen and you'll be able to see your piece and I'll talk about it and kind of point things out and you'll get a recording of me talking about it. Um, a lot of times I try to do that more than the writing um, because I think that grading and critiques and feedback of artwork can already be a little bit personal and uh, rough and not always enjoyable. So I think normally people take it better when you can actually hear me speaking as opposed to reading my comments and making up what you think my voice inflection might have been when I was typing it. Um, and then I can also point to things with my mouse and I think it's just a little bit easier to understand than my writing. Um, those videos, when I do the recording, um, I don't say what your grade is in it. So the rubric with your actual grade will be shared with you privately. I'm not like posting that to everyone in the class. If I do, when I do the video recordings, critiques, that I share um, because it's also normally super helpful to, and kind of fun to look at what your classmates are doing, but also really helpful to hear my feedback to your classmates because uh, that way you can learn from each other's mistakes and you can learn from each other's successes. So you're getting kind of more feedback at one time. Um, but you also can always, I don't like quiz you on it or anything. So you can also always just fast forward to when I'm talking about your work. Um, and then moving forward, once we're like really rolling, creating pieces, a lot of times during these calls too, we'll pull up pieces of work, some that are finished, talk about them, some that are in progress and kind of do more of a class critique. Um, I also made a note, I think on next week, um, you may have the urge once you get feedback from me that you just wanna like dive in and redo the piece. Um, for the most part, what I ask people to do is kind of like pause on that urge, keep moving forward, and then there are times throughout the course where I have built in some time for you to rework pieces. The reason I ask you to pause is because I find um, you can kind of get trapped in this cycle of, oh, I didn't love my first piece, I wanna redo it, and then you feel rushed to do your second piece, and then you wanna redo it, and you kind of really quickly fall behind or in, in this kind of eternal stage of behindness, which doesn't feel good. Um, so unless it's a really simple, quick, fix or unless you have a week where you feel like you have a ton of extra time, um, I promise you will have time to redo pieces and resubmit them for another grade if you're not happy with the grade and if you want to, but just take a, don't do it instantaneously or in the beginning you normally kind of get overwhelmed. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Welcome, Sam. Um, we just finished going over the rubric, but if you have any questions about the rubric, um, shoot that into the chat box. And if I didn't already talk about it, I will most definitely talk about it. Um, oh, that's okay. I'm glad you jumped on calc class. That sounds slightly terrifying. Are you good at calculus? I never took calculus, so I'm, I'm of no help in that situation. No idea what to do. <laughs> so anybody else good at calc in this class? <laughs> Daryl's like, no way, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, Aaron has calculus to look forward to. Congratulations. All right, we don't have any math wizards in here. Sorry, Sam. Mm. Zoe's taking it. Zoe and Sam, calculus study session. All right. Are you taking calculus online, Sam? He feels pressure to type really fast now. 
Where are you, Aaron? You're so bright. You look like you're in a light room. Sam, know my friend's mom is helping me and some other homeschool kids. Ah, good times. <laughs> Uh, when I taught at the public school, students were always asking me to help with calculus and physics, neither of which I ever took, um, because my high school didn't make you go that high. Uh, the window doesn't have very good shades. Oh, hey, no problem. It looks like it's wonderfully sunny there. So enjoy the sunshine. All right, well, I think I covered everything, um that I felt like I needed to cover with you. And from, I think I answered all of the questions that people sent me. So you are free to go. If you have um, any individual questions or things that you still want to chat with me about, um, I will hang out and answer them as long as you need me to. Otherwise have an awesome evening and I'm super excited to start seeing all of your concentration pieces. Sam just became giant on my screen. I don't know what happened. Wonderful. Yeah, unfortunately you did, Sam. Um, but we're glad you popped on for a couple minutes. Uh, so go ahead and listen to the recording. And um, if there's anything that's still confusing to you, feel free, like just post some questions under the recording and I will watch out for those. Um, next week, we are back to our call on Monday at 4.30. Hopefully not during calculus. All right.